everybody, live or at least in one take. It's your government affairs podcast. I'm Brad Ward. And I'm Brian Westrin. And uh, spring training has begun. Opening day is just around the corner. We got a little interdivisional rivalry going on here in the office. Uh, Brian, of course, is the Royals fan, going back to the uh, the George Brett days. Pine tar. Cheater. Um, but uh, the presidential primary just occurred here in Michigan, so uh, a lot of the excitement is dying down. No matter who you voted for, uh, I think we can say it was a very interesting night in Michigan. It's, it's been a while uh, since I can recall both sides having such um, you know, contested primaries on, on both sides. It's really exciting to watch uh, and should be, be fun kind of going into the next month or so here. Yeah, without a doubt, this is the first presidential uh, primary or campaign where we've concerned ourselves with the size of a candidate's hands. <laughs> well, uh, moving beyond that quickly, uh, we turn our attention to some of the things that have been going on in the legislature recently here. Uh, as of this past Tuesday, the governor signed into law Senate Bill 555. Uh, Senate Bill 555 uh, was sponsored by Senator Tanya Shootmaker. Uh, and the reason why I will point the, uh, out this bill and, and its importance is over the last couple of years, you've talk, we've talked a, a lot on this video cast about um, the role that the association is to able to play in terms of tracking uh, continuing education credits for our members and for licensees. Uh, the new CE Marketplace was launched last year, which um, was allowing our members to take that quality education that they were getting to make sure that they were audit proof. Indeed, Senate Bill 555 and with the governor's signature this week makes those credits, those things that are validated by our system, validated through CE Marketplace, that gives them the, uh, the the benefit of saying, you know, if you get audited by the department, the audit ends with us. As long as you're validated by us, that audit goes no further. So for those of you who are taking CE Marketplace classes, you now have that peace of mind uh, that the audit uh, will end here. Um, we're gonna be rolling out a little bit uh, more messaging, some more marketing, talking about the benefits of CE Marketplace, um, but really huge to come across the line. So we really thank Senator Shootmaker for all of her hard work on that, uh, the folks at the department for everything that they put into that bill. Um, really beneficial. If you're not using CE Marketplace, we really encourage you to use it now um, because we'll make sure that those continuing education credits that you are using that are going through our system um, are really uh, uh, for the benefit uh, of you and audit proof, if you will. And another area we are keeping tabs on is the legislation that Senator Peter McGregor has introduced, along with uh, some other trailer bills. Uh, the days of counting pages when you are recording documents may well end soon. Uh, it passed through the Senate unanimously, and it is now in the House Local Government Committee. Uh, what that bill would do, it would put a flat fee on the recording of all documents. That's right, all documents would be $30. So the days of having a mortgage and, and having to calculate the number of pages, and it sometimes gets upward to 60 to $70 in some instances, uh, or trying to do a commercial broker lien where you have to attach the purchase agreement. Um, those, ty those types of situations may now be reduced to a single fee. That's important for another reason, because under TRID, uh, as all of you know, uh, accuracy is one of the key areas because if you do have a page error, which according to the, the folks at the Land Title Institute and the, and the Michigan Association of Registered Deeds, happens to be the number one reason why a, a recording gets kicked back. So while it, while it wouldn't necessarily create a, a delay in the closing, it could certainly create a situation where a, a re-noticing has to occur. So we're keeping tabs on that. We've been in support of it. We were involved uh, in making sure that the fee stayed at a reasonable level. Um, making sure it actually drove it down from 35 to 30 now. So uh, your association's been keeping tabs on that. Yep, that's through the Senate. It's over in the House right now, and, and we're expecting quick action. I think that it's going to uh, get some scrutiny because I know there are certain members of that committee who are interested in the fee level, whether or not that fee level could come down even further. But I do know that Senator McGregor worked very diligently with the stakeholders to find out at what level could that fee be where it resulted in a revenue neutral number. Yeah, obviously, you know, we're not interested in, in shortchanging the Register of Deeds by any means. Um, but then again, we're not interested in necessarily turning in this uh, in, into a brand new revenue source, of course. Precisely. 
Uh, also starting this week was Senate Bill 395, which uh, got its first hearing in the Senate Finance Committee. Um, really a, a good, solid piece of legislation that could really uh, do a lot to benefit uh, those folks uh, suffering disabilities in Michigan. Brian? That's right. It's a, it's a very well-intentioned bill. Uh, the folks uh, at the who are spearheading a lot of work with muscular dystrophy um, have actually, um, I'm sorry, multiple multiple sclerosis, I should say, uh, have spearheaded an effort to make homes uh, that that individuals have to um, either upgrade or create uh, improvements to make them accessible for persons with disability, you may now apply for a tax credit under this bill. Uh, that would be a tax credit for your, to your income tax up to $5,000 based on the improvements that that the individual with a disability might have to make or a family member of that individual may have to make. Uh, that would be, uh, based on the testimony that we heard at committee, a, a real blessing because the expenses associated with uh, uh, trying to make a, make a home accessible and visitable for a person with disability um, can be incredibly expensive. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about, you know, ramps or walk-in showers, widening doorways, um, but really good piece of legislation, uh, like I said, come, really comes from the heart. Senator Gregory, um, you know, we've, we've had conversations with him. He's very proud of this bill. Uh, so we're hoping that this, uh, this starts moving forward. So. Yeah, it worked through committee unanimously, um, bipartisan. So with that, that's kind of the look around the Capitol. We look forward to, obviously, the Big Ten tournament this weekend, March Madness to follow, and, of course, opening day. And uh, we will see you all. Don't forget about the Broker Summit coming up here April 21st at the Breslin Center. That's a Thursday. Um, so come out and join us for that. should be interesting, especially if there's a national championship in Green and White's future. That's all there is for now. I'm Brad Ward. And I'm Brian Western. Have a good day. Oh, you put the boom like that. <laughs> <laughs>